Okay, so now it's time to actually start writing your first lab report. So I'm going to walk you through a sample of a lab report based on the lab that I explained in the lab format video and also based on my discussion in the chi-squared basics video. You want to make sure that you understand that lab that I explained before, before coming into this. So if you've forgotten what that lab was, you might want to quickly review the lab format video before starting this one. Also, you'll notice there's a lot of words on the screen here, and in order to really be able to read through those, you're going to need to pause this video and read the sections carefully. Don't, I don't recommend you just listen to me, um, because you'll need to see how I'm actually wording things in each section. But we're going to walk through the lab report step by step. Um, the first part is the introduction. In the introduction, you are basically giving me all of the background information that I need to understand what you're doing. Or that you need to show me you know what you're doing, maybe. Um, and so in the introduction, I'll have given you a few words that you actually need to use in your introduction and basically to explain. So in this case, the words are pill bug, um, choice chamber, and then chemotactic response. And you specifically also had to use um, positive chemotactic response and negative chemotactic response. Notice that I'm going to underline those words the first time I use them. That makes it easier for me to grade. It also makes it easier for anyone reading this to figure out what the main words were. You do not need to underline the words every single time you use them. Pill bug, for example, is only underlined here, but is never underlined again. So once you use those big words the first time and explain what they are, you don't need to underline them anymore in the lab report. After you've finished the introduction, you're going to move on to the apparatus and procedure. So in the apparatus and procedure, we first want to draw a little sketch. This helps people understand what's going on. So over here I have a sketch of my apparatus, my two choice chambers. First the control choice chamber and then the experimental one. You can see that I've given important details. I've labeled how many pill bugs there are and what the conditions are like. Things like that. You have to label your apparatus or it doesn't count. Also I've drawn important biological diagrams. So in this case I needed to draw a picture of a pill bug so that everybody knows what we're talking about and this is not just a picture you don't just draw a little bug with a smiley face you want to draw important details so you want to label tell me how many legs it has what is its scientific name things like that okay then we move on to the actual procedure section in the procedure you're gonna be writing exactly what you did okay notice that it's what you did it's not hypothetical, it's not in the future tense, it's in the past tense, what did you do? Okay? And you need to be very specific. You need to use numbers, like how many minutes. You can't just say leave them in the choice chamber. You need to tell me how long did you do it. You need to tell me how many pill bugs were there. Things like that. Okay? The other thing you'll notice is most of the procedures you've seen before have been written in bullet points you are not allowed to write your procedures in bullet points. The reason you can't do that is because on the AP test there are free response questions that ask you to write procedures for experiments and in fact there's free response questions of all different kinds and on these free response questions they will not accept bullet points. You have to write in paragraph form. So we're going to be practicing that in this class. You have to write your procedure in paragraph form. You have to write the other sections of the lab report in paragraph form. The introduction, the procedure, and the conclusion. But notice that this is not an English class. Okay, This is not an English essay. It will not have an introduction sentence. It does not have a conclusion sentence. You need to get right to the point. Make sure that every single sentence that you write in a science class conveys meaning. I don't want extra information, and I don't want transitions and other kinds of flowery language. 
just tell me what you need to tell me as quickly as possible. It does need to be a paragraph, but you're going to do it clearly and concisely. The AP test tells you not to use introduction and conclusion sentences because they don't help your score and they slow you down. The next section is the observations and results. You'll write a few observations from your experiment, things that you saw. In your sample lab report that you're writing for me over the summer, you don't need to write any observations because you didn't actually do the lab. But in other labs, like for example when we'll start growing plants, which takes about a month, you'll need to write a lot of observations because things are always happening to the plants and you need to keep recording that data. You'll also write a very nice and organized chart that catalogs all of your data. So you can see my chart right here. One thing that's important to mention is that every single chart or picture that you draw needs to be labeled as a figure. This is exactly what they would do in your textbook as well. They label the figures. This is so we can refer to them in the conclusion. So you actually had your first figure was back here. This is figure one for the apparatus. So I'll label that. And then I'll also label the chart as figure two so that I can refer to it later. Next, I'm going to draw a graph as part of my analysis. If I have a y-axis, a y-variable, and an x-variable that are both numbers, um, I would not draw this kind of graph. I would draw a scatter plot if they're both numbers. A scatter plot looks like this, just dots on a graph. You've probably drawn these in math class. You don't need to connect the dots, by the way. In fact, I don't like it when you connect the dots, and we'll talk about that later in class. But if only one of your categories is a number, for example, number of pill bugs is a number, but these are not, the side of the choice chamber is not, then you're going to draw a bar chart like this. Okay. The other thing that's important to mention is that the axes really matter. You always draw the independent variable, which is the one that you control. In this case, you controlled what the different sides of the choice chamber were like on the x-axis. And you always put the dependent variable, the one that you didn't control, the one that you measured, in this case the number of pill bugs on each side, on the y-axis. It has to be like that every time. This is figure 3. Let's not forget to label it every single time. Another thing you need to make sure to do is if you do any math, any statistical analysis, you're also going to show that and label that as a figure. So this is then figure four. And then lastly, we're going to get to the conclusion. So the conclusion is designed to explain exactly what happened in the experiment. And it can't just say what happened. Here's the most important part of a conclusion. You need to tell me not only what did you learn, but also cite evidence. So you can see here, for example, that it starts off by saying that we saw that the control group was more likely to be in side B of the choice chamber. That's a good statement. That's something you learned. But you've got to cite evidence. So I referenced figure 2 and said that you can see in that chart that there were six more pill bugs on side B than side A. So this is my observation. This is what I learned. And then after that, I cite evidence. A lot of times students say, oh, I don't know what to write in my conclusion. I just can't make it long enough. Usually that's because they're not citing evidence. I then went on to explain what my chi-squared value meant, my, that my chi-squared value was 1.2 and that that was below the threshold 
and that therefore the difference was not statistically significant. You might want to go through the next few sentences and try to find where the observations are and where the evidence is, explaining the rest of it. And then last, I summed it all up by referencing the words that I used in my introduction. I explained that in this case, the experimental group did show a positive chemotactic response to water. They wanted to move toward it, and I knew that it wasn't just random chance because of my chi-squared values. Your conclusions will not always look exactly like this, but make sure that your conclusions have both observations and evidence for everything that you say. And it's usually a good idea to explain what you learned from each of your different figures. And if you get totally stuck, that's a great way to go through. Make sure that you explained every single one of your figures and what you learned from it. And then don't forget that at the very end, you have to say what the whole experiment meant. What did you learn about the organisms you were studying?